one is recognizing we're going to live in a time of gross darkness. And because we're in the world and not of it, sometimes Christians think, well, I'm going to be a Christian. I'm not going to see them. No, you're, you're going to see it. You're going to hear it and you're going to feel it. But we respond to it differently. And so being an end time family is teaching your children and yourself as a family unit how to respond to, like I said, the walk culture, the sexual identity. I was in Canada the other day doing a conference. They have 62 ways a person can identify their sexual identity. 62. I had to print out and I was trying to read them. I could only understand four of them and I lost the rest of them. So that is gross darkness, folks. And that is just starting. Now we're dealing with the trans issue here in the States. I'm, I'm sure it's happened there in England and Europe. Yeah. My question is, what's after that? Because we've opened Pandora's box and all of these little demons are flying free and getting names and recognition and cultural you know, courtesies when they should be counseled and delivered and, and not be. So I would say, go back to the question is, understand that we live in a time when there's gross darkness, but great light. Yeah. So let's be in the light. And let's be a part of answering some of the ones in the darkness that wants out or is confused. Because I think there are many British and many Americans that are not saved, but they're nice people. They're overall good people, but they become victims of all of this. Mm. And they may need some Christian help, and they're more open to it than they used to be. So we have to learn that, that kind of thing. And uh, we cannot be moved by what we see or hear. I also believe an end-time family should find something they are involved in in their local community where they're helping through their church. Like I was doing my back porch chat this morning on Facebook and I was encouraging retired teachers, retired professors, retired principals. Can you get back involved and do after school educational programs or can you run for the school board and get on the school board and vote right things? Because you understand the system, you're a teacher, so there's a lot of things that we as end time families, we may think we're going to retire, but we're just going to change what we do. And I think that'd be a part of it as well. Third thing, and I'll give it fast, is we're going to have to be able to live by operating in spiritual laws. Because right now, like in our countries, the economics is going crazy. Our gasoline, our petrol, as you would call it up there, for us uh, here in Florida, it's almost $5. It's supposed to be $5 tomorrow. That's what they said in the news. California at $7 a gallon. New York, there's a place where it's $10. Now for us, that's crazy. Yeah. And so you got food problems. Everything's going up. It's, it's, it's not good. But we live in the kingdom. We see this. We feel this. We deal with this. So what spiritual laws, what spiritual things should we be doing as a family to counteract that negative impact upon us? Mm -hmm. And so to me, one, are you tithing and sowing? I know it's not logical, but it's scriptural, uh, you know, with, you know, sickness and disease. How are you taking care of yourself with healing scriptures and keeping the faith high on those things? So we have to know how to do those things as a part of our daily life as an end-time family, or all this stuff will come in on and fear will grip you. Like, I quit watching the news more than 10 minutes a day, because by the time I get through an hour, I'm depressed and praying for the rapture. So it's, it's not what I need to do. So you have to watch what comes at you in the last days.